Act, Bare Bones Society, Norman Woodstock's body, <clears throat> radio broadcaster, out of work. I went to YouTube, thought I'd audition. <clears throat> no. Well, this is more than that. I wanted to do this since I was a child, is speak to my planet about some things that have been on my heart. It was in my mom's womb, these things were on my heart. I remember them on my heart. My mother was telling me to be quiet then. Bang on her stomach, telling me, shut up. <clears throat> been going on a long time in my life. It is. Now, I represent the state of this surface of this planet, bare bones. That's where we're at right now, fiscally. My appearance is the fiscal state of this planet. How do you do? I'm going to pay the debts. i got to go find out the fungus and bacteria. Whew. Terrible. I mean, that's our fiscal problem, too. Fungus and bacteria. I'm going to speak to you today about somebody that's affected this planet a lot. Yep. One individual. Well, I almost wonder if it's not a pen name. Of someone. Not really the guy's name at all. Kind of like uh, Tom Sawyer. The guy I'm speaking about is Moses. Moses affected this globe a lot. Now, why the writing of this Moses affects things the way it does, I'm not sure. And according to the writings, the guy in his own day affected things a lot too. Another guy came along, <clears throat> they called Jesus, and they wrote about him. He didn't do the writing, he wrote, I mean, he spoke, lived, and as far as I'm concerned, they have no idea how he died. That's for sure. He died somehow like Mr. Wilson and Josie Wales. Who knows? It's a mystery. Wonderful. Put your logic where your mind belongs. And have the two of them take on the project of Christ and you'll come up with a different story than tradition tells, that's for sure. According to the story. If you read the story and picture it, that more than likely is not what happened according to how they end the story. No, that's not how it ended. No, it isn't. And it's still going on in not honest about the ending to the day. Also about this man named Moses. Not honest today about the guy and about the writings and what they say and what they do and how they affect things and so on and so forth. It's not a sweet story, folks. The fruit of Moses. Not a healthy fruit to eat here. It's become the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil and they certainly like to eat that fruit of the knowledge of good and evil and it's about their reasoning process and they actually are dumb enough to think that they could have something to do with the beginning of living your life or something they're buffoons their own information reminds them that living has a beginning that isn't relevant at this point. It wouldn't tell you if you understood every aspect of the dream chamber that built this cosmos and what led to this rinky-dink heat kit sitting on its desk, a wonderful little gem in a jewelry shop, this is the gem, priceless gem in a jewelry shop. If you understood the mechanic that built that, and understood all the beginning and ah, uh, wouldn't have anything to do with living it. It's one of the dumbest considerations that doesn't live here, and it's affected the place in such an asinine way, it is astounding because of the answers put there on the directions humans are living at this point with their mind and what they're doing with their so-called ability to invent and so on and so forth, it, it is basically something staring at its belly button. It is the dumbest thing you ever witnessed. 
any room or stars or planet. Has no place. I find it astounding. And Moses has something to do with it. Because of how this guy's writing it, his mindset affects the mindset of anything that, pardon me, swears allegiance to him. I don't get their allegiance sworn to this guy and or the books that he wrote or any of the darn, I, I, yeah, it makes no sense. None. I'm Jewish. That I found like a great, uh, uh, my brain, my brain stumbling for the term. A great Buddhist said it doesn't matter, and it doesn't. He said his chanting and everything, he did, he was quite a sophisticated man in the Buddhist religion and quite celebrated. In his abilities to do whatever Buddhists do. And uh, he had a stroke. And basically, he said it didn't matter. I got a film at the library explaining Buddhism. A wonderful film. And I understand it now and have no resentment for it at all. A wonderful religion. Came from Hindu. Like supposedly Christian did from Jewish, which is not really true of either one. They both come and all come from backing up Remember Humanity and living as a mammal. And the priority to that. And that's what it's all about. And there's no point putting it in these terms that have some kind of a mystical or invisible thinking thing that's superior to you has anything to do with your living here at all. And if you ever saw the superior thinking thing, if there is such a thing, it would mock you for the way you put words in its mouth and put its position in relationship to you that you have no clue about in the first place. No, you don't. That's not what's evident here. And all the remarks these people have been making about this place and what Moses said is not evident. What is evident is what matters. Not, I'm, I'm not sure where even Moses got some of his cracker disposition, but I'll tell you what, anybody, you're belly aching about being cruel right now, Moses would crack you alongside the head for belly aching at all about its cruelty. You're all building a golden calf. And one of these days, you're swearing old Moses is going to come back down off the mountain. You call it this second coming and that, and the world's going to end, and ah, bunk. I'll tell you what's going to end, your BS. That's going to end. Because it mocks your mammal. It mocks an accurate, inclusive description of the place. It sure does. And most of what Moses was up to mocked it. He mocked Egypt, uh, according to the story. I'll never understand it. I, I don't understand how cruel Egypt could have been to them at the time. Uh, I know they were pretty cruel to get into Egypt in the first place. If it wasn't for cruelty on their part, they couldn't have been to Egypt. And if it wasn't for something very nice, they couldn't have been in Egypt. Now, you put that package together, they look kind of fragile in Egypt in the first place. And it looks to me like there's a failure of confession there somewhere and the duty to live up to it. More than there's a problem in Egypt. There's a problem in the mindset of the so-called Jewish people. With I, I mean, the Passover is the knuckles on your... The blood coming out of these from tapping on each other's heart in a tender way. So lightly and so often that they bleed without marking the door at all. Hmm? Why would you mark the door from something to save you from the kind of curse? Why is it extortion that has to make things nice happen? Hi, wash. Time to go. I know I've gone a long time. Let's hope this thing posts. We'll talk more about Moses. Mm -hmm. We certainly will. And the effect of Moses to this planet is sobering. It very much is. Bye.